because of that, the, the toys explained to the stuffed animal that, um, that it feels well and as stiff animal started to realize that he was feeling he was feeling something he was feeling uh like he was missing this boy and he was feeling loved and and uh, the rabbit actually became a real rabbit after that because of the boy's love and uh, somehow that's that story always stayed with me that um yeah that as we love uh we are we express our real um who we are and others can be who they are. Um, but that was always a, a story that I was fond of. Um, anybody else that has something that was a, a positive story or an experience? I can remember as a young boy, you know, all of us are, are as missionaries, we're looking for ways how do we influence other people? How do we how do we make an impact on on those around us? And as you were talking, I remembered this, you know, just you know, growing up, and I would spend my summers with my grandparents. My parents would send me to the to northern Michigan, and I would spend my summers with my my uh, grandparents. And when I think of influence, my grandfather was a man of great influence with those around him. But I don't often remember him being a man of many words. The way he, he influenced people was by including them mm -hmm. in, in just daily life. In my life, the way it played out was he would often uh, uh, take take me fishing, you know, and we'd go out to the, a nearby river and we would just sit on the on the riverbank and we we would spend that time together. Even as a as a as a young third grader, I would go into coffee and I would sit there with with him and all the other adult men as they talked about politics, as they talked about what was going on in the community and life. And it was by that just mere inclusion into just daily life that the way he lived and the way he thought began to rub off off on me. And I and I think that's about a, a good way that we begin to learn to influence theirs, those around us. Often here with the, the Lahu people, influence is 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 in the time spent in drinking tea together and sitting around the fire together and just talking about life and what's happening in the community and what's happening you know and with the families around us and to me that's just the has become the secret of uh influence exactly thank you anyone else that has something we, we, we're going to start to glean some of our insights from these things that we've been sharing too. So uh, I want to I want to go ahead and start sharing my screen. There we go. Okay. Okay. So. As we talk about some of the things that we can still remember and some things that we don't want to be reminded of. Um, one of the first, the first of two strategies that we're gonna talk about today is capturing the reader's heart. Capturing the reader's heart. I don't know, I just saw this picture and it really caught my attention. So I thought it would help us. Um, Basically, like, I've, like we've said, that the beginning and the endings are the most important parts of anything you write. And we need to hook the reader's attention within the first few lines or we won't keep them reading. Kind of like what Phyllis shared, kind of what I shared about the service that sometimes if we, if whatever we hear at the beginning is probably gonna be what we remember the most or in some cases we can be quickly disappointed and not even want to listen further or read further. Um, something else that we need to talk about a little bit more is what it means to show, don't tell. And what it means to keep it short so that we can remember. Um, 
I don't know if this is a practice in, in schools across the world or if this is just an American thing, but when I was in kindergarten, we often had a, a time of class that was called show and tell. Anybody have any experience like that? Um, we, uh, we would be able to bring an object or something from our life at that stage and we could bring it and show it to the class and we had to tell about it. We had to talk about it. So it was basically a, a practice in public speaking for kindergartners. Um, but but it was it was enjoyable. And when we write, um, we need to use words that are descriptive, that capture our feelings, that capture the reader's um, heart. So. One example, I guess we'll look at some examples in just a minute, but let's talk about some of the things that we just listened to as we were sharing. And um, we're going to talk about what we remember from what others have just shared. And then we're going to write down some secrets, some things that uh, hopefully I can do this while we're wait, 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 I might have to go out of the screen saver mode. Okay, we'll just put it here. Okay, so if uh, when we think about um, Steve's example about his grandfather, what comes to mind as you think about what he shared? What do you remember about what he shared? Anybody can answer. Go ahead and unmute. Yeah, you can go ahead and unmute everyone and then we'll, uh, we can hear you. Can I unmute? There we go. Yeah, go ahead. I wonder if I need to unmute. Hi. Okay. Yes. Can I speak? Yes, please. I remember him sharing about his uh, grandfather and the great influence that he had towards the, I mean, uh, towards the people around his uh, community. He was a man of few words. Okay. But had a great influ influence, that's all. Okay, okay. So there were some key words that you remembered. Okay. Anyone else like to add to that? I would add that he uh, had that influence by spending time with people. Okay. Okay. Did we hear an example specifically of one of those times that he spent maybe with Steve? Steve, could you tell us one of those examples? Do you remember? Sure. Um, the, the one that always comes to mind is, you know, uh, sitting at the coffee shop uh, as a third grader drinking coffee with all the adults. Ah. Okay. Now, as you said that, I started to have a picture come to mind. Did anyone else, do you see, do you see a a third grade, maybe eight, nine year old boy sitting in a coffee shop, <laughs> drinking coffee for perhaps the first time in his life. Okay. Okay. Anything else that comes to mind? I Let's see, anybody else have, uh, I might have to unshare so I can see you. Go ahead and speak up if you have anything to share because I can't see everyone, but let me do this way. Okay, okay. Well, some of the things that we will, we want to point out is that um, when we have, 
when we can tell descriptive words. So words that don't just say, um, my, my best friend uh, likes to talk, but maybe instead say something like, um, Kathy, Kathy talks as though she can't breathe unless she can say another word. Something that really captures your, wow, that's a lot of talking. Um, use words that sh describe the time or the place, the setting. Uh, use words that describe action. Um, that gives sense, a sense of surprise or anything that's a short or memorable quote. Like I remembered from the book that, that um, he said, I just wanna be a real buddy. I'm, I wanna be real, um, uh, something like that. So that's some examples of, of how we can um, use action words. and surprise, okay. Those kinds of things will help keep, will help uh, capture an, uh, a reader's attention. Okay, so we've just kind of done this together, but, well, we started with getting the idea, but I would like to invite you to have an opportunity to share, if you do have something that you've written, um, to share a, a paragraph of something that you've written. And we're gonna go ahead and, and break out into small groups. First of all, let me unshare this for the moment so I can see everybody again. Um, does everyone have something? Did you bring something that you have written? As long as we have someone that has something to share, then we can we can uh, break out into breakout groups. But otherwise, you're going to be kind of just sitting there and doing nothing. So, okay. I have something to murder. Okay. Well, let's take it away. No. Okay. Please Does anybody me. else have something? Just a quick hand. Okay, okay. So let me put, um, okay, let's do this. Let's do this together. I don't think we've got so many people that we can't do it together in one language. So let's just go ahead and keep us, keep us together at this point. Um, but uh, take a look and I'd like one of you to just read, um, read a paragraph of what you had started to write. Um, okay, I'll go back to this. Hold on, I've got to share first. I'll go back to this screen so we can see what we're doing. Share this one. Okay, so we're gonna ask that you read a, a paragraph that you want to make more engaging. You don't have to read the entire, if it's an article, you don't have to read the whole thing, but just choose a paragraph that you really would like to, um, maybe it'd be the introduction, maybe it's the conclusion, maybe it's just a part in the middle that you feel like needs some, needs some help. Um, and then we are going to be the listeners and we're going to pull out I, the main idea or some word or phrase that can capture that really captures our attention the most. Okay, so that's what we're going to that's what we're going to do here first. Um, for example, well, let's go ahead. I'll let you be the first um, example. Okay. So Michelle, would you be first today? Uh, okay, I would just like to share my screen because I wrote sure. it in the word doc. But this was this was published uh, uh, in our website. But then uh, I just wondered how they edited it. Edited it. Um, okay. This is not the original anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, but but, uh, but the the first paragraph it's mine. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the first paragraph. Is it showing? Yes. Is it showing? Yes, this Very is good. the one that was published 
on September 23. Okay. Actually, uh, um, Pastor's kids' moms were asked to write. Uh, what did we? Okay, do we don't that? we don't want to have lots of explanation. We just want to oh. take it at its at its face value. So, so let us. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You can read. Yeah, when quarantine began in March 16, 2020, it was a shock to every family. There were lots of fears, uncertainties, doubts, and even mental complaints about the COVID-19 virus. There were lots of what if, how to, hope that, or when will kinds of thoughts. And it took a lot of courage for us to face and accept the reality of what was going on in the world. That's my original one. Okay. Uh -huh. And for children in the Philippines, the quarantine continues as no one under 20 years old is allowed to leave their homes unless it is emergency. Enjoy this story from one family just outside of Manila as they create learning spaces for their children, even in lockdown. Okay. That's not mine. Okay. I have a question. Is this something that, um, was this a news article or was this um originally they were uh um the ncm asked me to write uh, -huh. uh but i didn't know that they will publish so i i just write out of my heart as a mom right okay okay so i don't okay. know how to categorize it okay okay um how is it a long article um uh it's just few like that three or four uh, paragraphs okay till there yeah. Okay. Yes. Ah, let's read the last paragraph. Uh, yes, the, the, the last part. Uncertainties are still in front of us, but this pandemic has taught us as a family to care, to observe, and to do something valuable. We do it together with scrutinizing eyes and hearts open to learning. We as parents have only one prayer for our sons, that they would grow up following Jesus and as a blessing to many. May our vegetable garden be an avenue for them to view the world through God's eyes. Ah, okay. Something caught my attention in that. What about anybody else? Um, I think we might need to read the, the, might need to ask you to read the story. This seems like there's a theme in there that wasn't really captured in the first paragraph. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there. We have a vegetable mm. garden just outside our rented room. My husband, Pastor Pedrito of the Lisa Church of the Nazarene, made us this special garden. Our goal was to satisfy our son's curiosity and to give them a chance to hold, feel, and rub the soil in their hands. We live in the city and we wanted to teach uh, them how to value life, to let them see how plants grow, flower, harvest, and die. We wanted to show our children how worms, butterflies, snails, jumping spiders, spring mantises, and leeches interact with the plants. We wanted to show them how the torrential rains can destroy the leaves and erode the soil and that the heat of the sun is also a factor and causes the soil to dry up and the roots of the plants to seep the water. We love showing them farm life, like we experienced when we grow up, grew up as kids in the countryside. Okay. Now, I, okay, let me ask for, from, the, from the whole group here, what comes out to you, either from the first, this paragraph, or the last paragraph? What's, what kind of catches your attention or captures your heart? Anyone can answer. Well, I don't know what is in between, but clearly from this uh, sentence, we have a vegetable garden, and then jumping down to the closing paragraph, she follows the theme yeah. Yeah. through there. Yeah, I think so. Okay, anything else to add to that? I think it is the third sentence that says, our goal was to satisfy our son's curiosity and give them a chance to hold, feel, and rub the soil in their hands. Mm. I like that very descriptive uh, sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you find yourself kind of entering in to the story? Or do you find yourself entering into the story?
I think I might start entering in when no, she no, talks indeed. about about Petros. Okay. In the next paragraph. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He talks about his eyes and hands, trying to find new things in the garden. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where do you think the story really starts, or where do you think um, our attention, I, uh, really, really catches, um, catches the theme, catches the focus. Personally, I felt like the first paragraph was more like you're trying to tell us what you're going to tell us. And when you got to the second paragraph, you're starting to put some more showing words in there. Um, I think, I think, honestly, um, you probably want to start with the second paragraph and maybe oh. even start with the story of Petros and introduce the nine-year-old and show us the vegetable garden through his eyes. Too often we can try to tell somebody what we want them to know and we feel like we have to tell them right away or they're not going to listen. But what we have what happens is we tell them everything and they don't have any reason to explore. They have nothing to discover. But if we can give them the picture and we can un kind of like we're the camera and they're they're looking at the what we already know they're just seeing it through just the just the lens that we give them we need to tell them the details we need to give them the description we need to give them the sensory um the sensory words the concrete words uh, the action instead of telling us about curiosity let us experience that curiosity through the child mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if, if you need to tell us any of that stuff from the beginning paragraph later at the end, because maybe we need those details to understand something to respond, then that's, that might be okay. But I have a feeling that if we hear the story through the child's eyes, see the story through the child's eyes, as long as there's a clear response or something we can, we can uh, do in response to that, You've already caught our attention. You've already caught, motivated us without telling us. So that's the difference between telling and showing. If we can keep it as descriptive and as um, interactive as possible. Okay, what about Phyllis? I know you said you had something that you could share with us too. You want to give us. You can read it or you can show us however you want with your screen or not. Just unmute yourself. Okay, here you go. There you go. This is about a person, okay? okay? Ema grew up in the eastern part of our country. Most of the people where she lived were Christian. As a child, Ema would play with her friends and sit in a row like they were at church, and Ema would preach to them. She was playing, but even as a child, God had started to plant the call to preach on her heart. Um, and that's the first paragraph. Okay, okay. How do, our, how, do, how do our hearts respond so far? Anybody that's listening, do you hear? What do you see? What do you think? I guess I... I'm a bit curious, you know, when the word plain was used, she was plain. Well, what does that mean? And how does that play out through the rest of the story? Okay. Okay. So it caught your curiosity. Okay. Anybody else? Doris or Rachel or Jasmine or Ingrid? Let's see if we can get anybody else thoughts.
Okay, give us another bit more of the story there, Phyllis. I'm gonna pull it up so that okay. you can, can you see it now? Uh-huh. Okay, so there's the, that paragraph. Ema's growing up years were not easy. Ema's home was a broken home. Her father had left her family when Ema was in elementary school. This caused the family many problems. The family felt shamed. They never had enough money. They struggled in life. Um, other relatives helped her family, but not cheerfully. Life was all about money. When Ema expressed her call to be a minister, a larger family told her, you should be a teacher. As a teacher, you can get a good job. Mm. Her relatives worked very hard to make Ema be under their control. Mm. Ema had a boyfriend, but this boyfriend was not a devoted disciple of Christ. She was called by God to preach, but her heart was divided. Mm. Her family did not treat her well. Each time her relatives would ridicule Ema, Ema's heart was broken and torn. Ema looked good on Sundays, but she found it difficult to live out her faith on the weekdays. Mm. Her life was inconsistent. She was low on peace. Anger was never very, never far below the surface. Okay. 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 Choose another part that kind of gives us a little bit more of the... Um, oh, okay. Let's just see where are, how are our hearts responding at this point? Do we feel like we are uh, identifying with Ima or are we feeling, um, are we hearing too much? What are you, what are you feeling in this so far? Anybody? Please pull out to the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a missing gap between, uh, as a child, Ima would play with her friends and siblings. And then she would sit them down in a row like, were at church, then Ima would preach to them. I th for me, there's a gap between playing and then preach to them. Okay. Well, I think she's talking about the playing. Well, let me ask, let me let Phyllis respond. Yeah. Um, it may not be clear there, but that was her play. Yeah. Yeah. She was pretending to be in church. She was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it shows me her heart, her heart as she really, she really does want to be in church. But then in her home, I see a contrast between her, her heart and her home. Okay. Just for the sake of time, what can you tell us about closer to the end of the story, Phyllis? Right here. Okay. Now, Ema is part of a team that has gone to a large city, one and a half million, including the surrounding area where there are 2.2 million people. 97% of them are neighbor, most of whom are considered unreached people groups. They don't even know someone who is Christian. There's no one to tell them the gospel. Ema has two goals that fit together. Ema plans to plan a church and to start a kindergarten. A short time after... Um, Arriving in the city, she made friends with and reached people. She started regularly meeting with three neighbors and praying for them. One of them came to believe in Jesus. And then the Church of the Nazarenes. Right? For me, the story really starts when she says that Ema comes from a broken home. Okay. That's that's where, that's the point when uh, I can emotionally connect a little bit. Um, and maybe, since I haven't read the rest of the story, but maybe that's the hook that she could use uh, to follow through as a theme for the rest of the story. Okay. 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 
Um, there is a strategy, or at least it's a tool that we call framing. And sometimes, I know we tend to want to tell stories chronologically, but sometimes if the real pivotal climactic event or the, or the real focus point in the story happens at a later moment in the person's life, it is okay to jump in and start at that moment, that pivotal climax moment. And then you can do like a back, uh, a backtrack and kind of show, show what led up to that moment later. Um, it just depends what, what it is that you really want to propel the story uh, for the readers to remember. If you want them to remember this, this girl was a really um, happy child with a, with a call from her childhood, then you're probably going to focus on that piece at the beginning and pull it through to the end and show how God was faithful, even despite um, the challenges that she faced growing up that God continued to fulfill her, the call he had on her life. But if the focus of the story is to show that her, her ministry and how it's been so um, pivotal now and how she's overcome so many things, then you may not actually need to open with the calling at the beginning. You may need to open more with, with a crisis point and then show how God um, I still had a purpose through that. So it, it kind of depends on what your goal is in telling the story as well. Um, okay. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I'm going to go back to um, my screen, hopefully. Helps to do this way. Share. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna jump on past mine because these that you've shared were really awesome. And the next thing that we need to remember is how we end well with a takeaway. Um, basically, at the end of the narrative, we really do need to restate um, the most important takeaway in as few words as possible. I think one of the things that can, that can uh, confuse or um, muddle the message in what we write is when we try to say too many things at one time. I'm notorious for this when I try to preach because I find myself so eager to say a whole bunch and then I remember I only have 20 minutes and if it's got to have translation by any point it's even less. So it's really important to try to bring out one key idea from the story. And um, you may use this, now it is possible to use the same content, the same person's life story to share more than one takeaway, but you wouldn't do it at the same time. You would write that story several different, in several different ways to bring out the different takeaways. Um, but you need each, each story needs to really have one concrete as much as possible takeaway. And it needs to connect back to that attention getting detail. So similar to what we saw in Michelle's story about the vegetable garden, the fact that that was part of the takeaway at the end showed us that we needed to bring that out at the beginning really clearly. Um, and, and, and so again, for, for Ema's story, um, it would depend on, on the focus that we want this story to leave with the reader. And that would kind of guide the introduction and the, and the ending together. Um, I, I remember a, a story that I heard that was basically, I don't even remember the content of the article. I just remember the very first sentence was, the shot rang out across around the world. And I'm like, wow, it was like a historical moment. Um, and, then, and then I just put it my own ending. What will you be remembered for? So you, you, you want something that attracts the reader in the beginning, and then you want to pull back to that. You want to connect back to that in the takeaway at the end. Um, so some examples. Um, I, had, I have a couple examples, but I, I won't read the whole thing. But some of the samples of, of a good beginning and perhaps a good takeaway um, 
I was looking back at some of my newsletters over the past uh, couple of decades and realized I have written a lot about stories where it's it was challenging to witness or it was somehow um, somehow I saw some fruit and uh, so one one statement was it's hard to be encouraged about witnessing because I was seeing all these different discouraging moments and so then um, just asking for prayer that the lost would be found in Bangkok so going from the lost in Bangkok to the found in Bangkok um, one 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 article I remember I started with yesterday it rained and then I was talking about it was getting close to Easter and I, I was trying to focus on how God wants his reign, the reign of his Holy Spirit in our hearts and um, just kind of played on words with rain and rain and sharing the refreshing rain and rain of Jesus. Um, and then a story about Emmanuel comes to Thailand and uh, after several examples, Emmanuel, God with us has come and is coming to hearts in Bangkok. So you just, just to show that we try to stay on the same theme in some way. Um, so do you have some, uh, we've, we've looked at some of these examples. Um, does anyone have another thought that you'd like to add that we could say was a good beginning and maybe a, a takeaway that could come out of that? We could use something that we already heard this morning or something else that you've, you've read or written. If not, we can come back to that another day. But um, the last thing that really we need to hold on to and we write, and this is kind of understood, I think, is to consider the purpose of why we're writing. Um, oftentimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just have a, a moment. I've had an experience. I've watched a person's life develop, and I just feel like, oh, that needs to be a story. So I want to write it down, and I want to get as many details and all of it together in one place as possible and put it out there. And if I'm not careful, I don't even know what the purpose is. I'm just feeling the need to remember, and I don't want to lose this experience so i'm putting it down but when we actually write something that might be our our journal that might be a good way to keep the information in our journal but when we take it to actually share it with a reader we need to have a clear purpose do we want to inform the reader do we want to persuade the reader do we want to inspire them to teach them what exactly do we want to accomplish as they read as they read what we write and um, the other piece that I find very interesting is that uh, we write like we talk. And this may or may not be an encouraging statement to hear, but um, if you find yourself speaking by jumping from one topic to another, your writing may lack focus. If you find yourself needing to try to tell every detail in every setting, your writing may be wordy. If you find that you, you talk nonstop quickly and you hardly can take a breath, what do you think that will cause your writing? What would your writing be like? I might writing find may look, the writing may look uh, messy. Ah, or like yeah. choppy. Sure. Uh, if it's nonstop, I think it looks messy. Right, right. You know, talking better than this, like one very long sentence the size of a paragraph. Exactly. You kind of get lost. Exactly. Exactly. Start to feel like you need a map if you're the reader. Kind of like, um, where are we going with this? Uh, but uh, my goal, and I don't know 
if I'm, I'm still learning this, so don't, don't get the impression that I have arrived at this, but this is where my continued goal is, is to write transformationally. Um, that means that I want to leave something packed with life potential. It's the difference between two-dimensional drawings and three-dimensional sculptures. Both can be eye-catching and memorable, but one will let you hold and touch and turn it around to see new facets every time you revisit it. I haven't yet achieved my writing goal. I'm still discovering, but I notice that word choice needs to be using active voice, concrete nouns, examples that relate to the readers that I'm targeting. Sometimes I imagine being back in a middle school English class or as a student, I wrote out my raw feelings or opinionated ideas as I responded to journal prompts each day at the beginning of class. Let me read that again. Sometimes I imagine being back in a middle school English class where as a student, I wrote out my raw feelings or opinionated ideas as I responded to journal prompts each day at the beginning of class. Now I'm just gonna ask you to think briefly about that sentence. Did any of the words capture you? Did any of the words turn you off? Can you read it again? Yes. Sometimes I imagine being back in a middle school English class where as a student, I wrote out my raw feelings or opinionated ideas as I responded to journal prompts each day at the beginning of class. Yes, it, it really feels raw. It, okay. brings, it brings back memories. Oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> Do you see yourself yeah. in the picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Does anything give you a negative feeling? That strong, opinionated, raw. Okay. 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 Anybody those else? E those emotions don't bother me, you know, expressing those. The only negative I got from it was I think the sentence was too long. Okay. Yeah, it was all one sentence. Anything else? Just one sentence, but all emotions are there. Okay. Okay. Did anybody pick up on middle school English class? Did any of that kind of say, oh, I don't want to go there? Yes, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's oh. what I'm asking for. Yes, yes, you can tell. Okay. Okay. So you see. Sorry, we, yeah. we don't have middle school. Oh, well, you can think seventh grade. grade. Yeah. We have seventh grade. Yeah. <laughs> you can think first year of after primary school, whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, what I want. Uh, you, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I remember uh, middle school or maybe high school. Okay. Our English teacher, it's. It, uh, from your, uh, from from that narration itself, it makes me go back to my memories back in high school, uh -huh. where we wrote different kinds of poems, and uh, we wrote several essays. Okay. Yeah, and I owe uh, until today. I owe my my every right <laughs> to my teacher. So okay. I have one teacher that really influenced me a okay. lot with regard to writing poem, and uh, it it uh, it brings me back to those uh, memories okay. of uh, fun writing. Okay. Okay. At high school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I want you to, what I wanted you to catch from that was just that, yeah, what we read, what we've written should capture 
the focus of our reader in a way that they can relate. It should, there should be something, whether it's emotion or, or a, a memory of a picture or, or an idea that, oh yeah, I used to think like that, or I had experience like that. It should be something that draws, draws the reader in to what we're, to what yeah. we're writing. Um, and so that will be what creates an, a response. When we invite the reader in to what we're writing and they can, in, they can relate their life to what we're saying, then they will have a response. It may or may not be the response we're hoping them to have, but they will have a response. Um, and that is what, that's what I say is transformational. We need the writing to engage the reader's attention by capturing their heart and their mind in such a way that they really do want to respond. Um, so again, just to, to use the concrete nouns and action verbs, that, that's the showing, not just the telling. Uh, using the active voice. So instead of saying, oh, I was, on, I was on the bus for three hours, we say, I sat still in this seat for three hours. You just feel, it feels like you're there. And we take the examples or illustrations that relate to the readers that we're really targeting. So this is where not only we have to think about our purpose, but we also have to be clear about who we're writing to. I know we would love to think that everything we write, every person we know is gonna wanna read, but that's just not true. We generally need to choose whether it's an age group, whether it's a demographic uh, group of people, uh, whether it's people in our family, people in um, our church, we, we need a clear audience. And then we can use examples and illustrations that will connect um, what we're sharing to them. And uh, if we can spark emotion, uh, we're more likely to be remembered and also motivate their response. Okay, so um, we don't have time to do this as a breakout activity, but as some of us, if you haven't shared an unpleasant experience, um, you can think about what it is that um, creates the barrier. What is the barrier in that? Uh, Phyllis, if we go back to what you shared at the beginning of um, the sermon that you remember, but you really only remember the, illust the illustration at the beginning, um, what do you think was a barrier for you in really remembering that sermon? We just have to have you unmute yourself. See if I can unmute you. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Yeah, I I have the screen sharing, so I don't see oh, the way to sorry. unmute. Um, anyway, what I was expecting to hear was God's word. I was expecting to hear a sermon. And instead, I got a very extended explanation of what all his family is doing. And so what I was expecting is not what I got. And so by the time he got to the point of sharing God's word, my mind was already full. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on track mm. to a direction. So what would you say was the barrier? Was it just the length of time or, the, <laughs> or just the quantity of details that he shared? <clears throat> yeah, it was a huge quantity of, you expect welcoming comments right. Right. you know and that, but it was just so extended right. <laughs> it was too long up front yeah yeah and that's similar to what i experienced when i was listening to the video to the uh service um that they sent someone sent me a link sure. to i i found that it's opened with like a, a testimony and the person just went on and on for like 10 minutes on 
something that I don't think really related to anything else in the service. And I just kind of thought, I'm not sure that was the best timing for that mess for that testimony to be shared. Um, but any rate, yeah. So we can we need to be aware that even though we can be really excited to share all the details about a particular uh, experience or something, is it really going to tie to our reader and help them see what we want them to see or hear what we want them to hear? Um, we have to be able to restrain ourselves sometimes from sharing just what we feel like we want to. Okay, so that's, um, yeah. And the, uh, what I would like you to, what I would like to challenge us to do in the next um, couple of months or so is, is as you have opportunity, practice writing and practice noticing how your, how your introductions and your conclusions can tie together, how you can, you can bring something attention getting to the reader in the beginning of what you write and then tie back into it at the end with something easy to remember. And just practice that for a bit. Um, for those of you who do have some peers right there around you, feel free to practice with each other and write something out. It doesn't have to be long, but practice this with each other and read each other's writings and uh, give each other some critique on, yes, that looks like that catches my attention or no, you know, I think that needs to show a little more than it's tell than tell, um, but give, give some of that feedback to each other. And um, we'll, we'll come back again in uh, January. I'm still confirming the date exactly. So I'll send you an email again if you, um, if it'll be, and uh, we're gonna also be looking at some other types of writing. Um, so we'll be talking about devotional writing and um, some specific more details to, to articles and that kind of thing in future sessions. But I'll try to plan something like this about every two months. So it's not too frequent, but my goal is that you will actually take the time in between to practice. And if you do have questions, feel free to write to me in between, um, but you don't have to. I want this to be something that you will enjoy um, growing into. So it's not exactly an assignment, but um, if you practice well, well, what we've talked about today, I think it will continue to blend with what you're already doing. Um, so do you have any questions before we close today? And I've got off the share so we can actually there. Okay. All right, so let me pray and uh, we'll close this here. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for this time. And um, I just pray that you would guide us as we continue to develop in uh, becoming more transformational in our writing um, so that others will hear your heart and hear the message that you would give through what we write. And I pray, Lord, that you would encourage each of these that have taken this time today and that, um, yeah, you would, you would bring us back together in, in at some point when we can practice some more. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. And I do appreciate any feedback that you would like to share with me as well, because I'm still learning how to do this on Zoom myself. So um, thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, I, hope, I hope it's beneficial. <laughs>